हरे कृष्णा गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्णा माय हंबल ओबिसेंसेस गुरु महाराज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू प्रभुपाद माय ओबिसेंसेस टू यू ऑल ग्लोरीज टू प्रभुपाद हरे कृष्ण प्रभु हरे कृष्ण गुरुदेव हरे कृष्ण अर्चना प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हंबल ओबिसेंसेस गुरु महाराज हरे कृष्ण We can begin. Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachadeshatarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're going through the different chapters of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is Prabhupada's summary study of the 10th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam. And we are on chapter number 20. So we had begun the chapter. Sukadeva Goswami is giving different examples about the autumn, about first of all the rainy season and uh, well the first half of the chapter is about the rainy season and the second half of the chapter is about the autumn season which follows the rainy season. So in the rainy season, we all know what it's like, that you get a lot of big clouds, dark clouds, and you get uh, thunder and lightning, storms, like that. So because the rain is heavy, the rivers become, uh, the level of the water in the river will rise and there will be like a surge of the water. The water will be flowing very fast into the ocean or into the sea. So 
พอน้ำขึ้นมาสูงเนี่ยก็จะทำให้น้ำจากแม่น้ำเนี่ยลงไปสู่ทะเลอย่างเร็ว And so it appears like the river is disturbing the ocean because there's so much water from the river flowing into the sea. It appears like the ocean is being disturbed. So that's compared to the yogi who may not be very advanced in spiritual life, who sometimes becomes agitated by sex desire. But the person who is in Krishna consciousness. Even if he is put into difficulties, it's not he's not worried about it. He goes on with his life. So the Krishna conscious devotee, he's like the mountain. Just like when there's a heavy rain, the heavy rain. It doesn't disturb the mountain. The mountain just stands there and takes all the rain. Hmm. Will, will accept all the difficulties, the troubles which come as the mercy of Krishna. Mm. There's a famous verse spoken by Lord Brahma in the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tate na kampam sushamikshamana bunjana evatma kritam vipakam that if a devotee tolerates all troubles and accepts them as the mercy of Krishna, then he becomes qualified to go to the spiritual world. So and then another example which Sukadeva Goswami gives, he says just like in the rainy season there will be some paths, some paths uh, and the, the path will, will become covered with long grass because it's not used very much. So, so this is compared to a brahmana. Sometimes the brahmana, he hasn't been practicing or studying the different Vedic mantras and he forgets them. He forgets his position as being a servant of Krishna. That's Maya, when you forget the position that we're Krishna's servant, and that is Maya. So the same way, that because of the, just like in the rainy season, the, the grass grows on the path, and the path becomes covered, you can't see the path. 
So the brahmana forgets what his real duty is. We for, the, the Brahmana forgets about his spiritual life and just becomes, he's only thinking about his material life. So that is the face of Maya. Then during the rainy season, there will be lightning. And the lightning, one minute, one second, it will flash in one cloud, and then the lightning will suddenly move to another cloud, another part of the sky. So this phenomena, this is like a, a woman who who's, doesn't fix her mind and she thinks one minute she's thinking of one man, next minute she's thinking of another man. So it's important that a woman should learn to be faithful and chaste to her husband. Sometimes we see the man may be working very hard and he may be earning income to provide for his family, but then, but then his wife may divorce him. And then when they divorce, then the children also don't, some, maybe one, the, the girl will go with their mother, the boy will go with the father, the children become separated, the whole family becomes ruined. So it's important for any woman who wants to advance in Krishna consciousness that they should live peacefully in family life and should not separate, doesn't matter what happens. And the man and woman should live together, not just for sense gratification, but they should live together to cultivate Krishna consciousness. They shouldn't be restless like the lightning, the lightning flashing from one cloud to another. They shouldn't be restless like that. So sometimes when there's some storm or thunder, there may be a rainbow in the sky. So the rainbow is, is, like, a, is like a bow. You just like you have a bow for firing arrows. It's like a bow, but without a string. And 
When you have a bow, you, 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 the bow becomes bent because you have a string tied at the two ends. But in in the rainbow, there's no string, but still it's all bent like a rain, like a, a bow. So this rainbow is compared to the personality of Godhead who appears in this world. He appears like an ordinary person, but he is not depending on anything material. And the, in, the, in the rainy season, the light from the moon is covered by clouds. The clouds come in front of the moon and they stop the light from the moon. And sometimes it appears that the moon is moving, but actually it's the clouds which are moving. The moon is still. So this is compared to a person who at, sometimes we identify ourselves with the material world and we forget our spiritual identity. We're thinking we're moving through different species of life. But this is just the illusion. Mm. Actually, our, our understanding that we're a spirit soul is covered by the false ego. So that false ego is just like the clouds which cover the moon. We think the light is coming from the clouds, but the light is not coming from the clouds. The light is coming from the moon which is behind the clouds. The same way we identify with the false ego, but that false ego is actually coming from the soul. Consciousness comes from the soul, not from the false ego. And then Sukadeva Goswami then gives the example about the peacocks who are compared to people who are very much disturbed about material life. <coughs> Just like the peacocks begin to dance, then the same way people who are very disturbed in material life, they also begin to dance like peacocks when they get good association. Uh, 
โลกยูใช่ไหมคะเขาก็จะเขาเขาจะมีการเต้นของเขาด้วยใช่ไหมเวลาเขาไม่ความสุขเพราะฉะนั้นเหมือนกันสําหรับนักวัตถุนิยมเนี่ยเวลาที่เขาได้การคบหาสมาคมกับสิ่งที่ดีหรือกับบุคคลที่ดีเนี่ยเขาก็จะเต้น Before becoming devotee, we did not dance. We were never very happy. We were not joyful. But after becoming devotee, we become joyful and we're dancing just like peacocks. Then Sukadeva Goswami talks about plants and trees which grow by drinking water through the feet from the ground. So. During the hot summer season, before the rainy season, the person is doing, you know, eight months of austerity because it, it's very hot and dry, and there's no rain. So that time he's just doing austerities, and just like these trees and plants, they don't get any rain for eight months. They're just doing austerity. But after the eight months of the dry season, then comes the rainy season. And then they get rain, and, and everything becomes nourished. All the plants grow very nice, become very uh, luxuriant. Just like the man, sometimes he's doing great austerities for some time. And then he gets some results. He gets the result of the austerity, and he, he gets uh, material opulence and happy sense gratification with his family. So just like the trees and the plants, they begin to grow and they grow nourished. When they get the nice water and it rains, then everything grows nicely. So in the same way, the man is getting the results of his austerity. He's also showing opulence. He becomes very happy. <laughs> Then another example is given about some birds who are around here. The birds are like the ducks and the cranes. You know, crane, the white bird, which comes, they always come to eat the worms wherever people are doing farming. So these birds usually they they like to stay on the bank of the river or on the side of a water reservoir, and sometimes it will be very muddy and dirty there, and there'll be garbage there. 
but these birds will stay there. So these birds are compared to people in family life who have no Krishna consciousness and they're just suffering so much. Naratam Das Thakur says you cannot be happy without Krishna consciousness. But if one is in family life and if he's a devotee, then we want his association. Right? We don't care if he's in family life or not. The important thing is that he's a devotee. We want to associate with somebody who chants the holy name. If we're not devotees, then world, the material life is very difficult. So much fighting and quarreling and trouble and arguing. But, but if one is in Krishna consciousness, then he can be happy, he can be joyful. So, in, when, when they have the, the fields, the farmer will build a wall of mud around the field to keep the water in, because he knows it's not going to rain very much, it doesn't rain for long. So he builds a wall around the, the field so that the water will not run away. <laughs> But sometimes there will be a heavy storm and the heavy storm will cause the wall to break and all the water will run out. So this is like what happens in the age of Kali that unauthorized people they preach atheistic philosophy and ruin all the good qualities of people. Yeah, because they preach such nonsense philosophies, the people have no understanding about God and they may take up some bogus philosophy and then they start to do all nonsense, drinking and eating fish and meat. But at the same time, they're saying it's all one, it's all the same, it doesn't matter. So in the rainy season, 
there will be big clouds and the wind will blow the clouds around and this way the water will, the rain will fall just like nectar to cool down the, all the land and to bring relief to the people from the scorching heat. So this is like when rich men give charity to help all the other people to perform sacrifice. The brahmanas are meant to perform sacrifices and they're meant to oversee the distribution of the wealth, make sure everybody is taken care of. So in the Vrindavan forest, there's many wild fruits. There's, there's dates and mangoes and berries, different fruits, and Krishna and the cowherd boys would sit and eat them. And because there had been good rain, so a lot of grass was growing, so the cows could get nice and fat, they could get a lot of grass to eat. And because the cows were happy and healthy, they gave a lot of milk. And Krishna would call them by name and the cows would come. When he would call their name, they would come and when they come, the milk from their milk bag would flow on the ground. They were so happy, they would offer their milk to Krishna. So Krishna was very happy seeing the Vrindavan forest and on one side Govardhan hill and other times you'd see the Yamuna river. And there were beehives pouring honey. And Govardhan Hill had waterfalls and the water was flowing down making a nice sound. So sometimes it would rain and Krishna would go and hide in the cave on the Mount Govardhan hill away from the rain, wait for the rain to finish. And sometimes Krishna would just sit under a tree with all the cowherd boys and they would sit and eat fruits and talk and wait for the rain to go off. And Mother Yashoda would send, she would send from her home, she would send sweets and rice and yogurt and some fruit for Krishna and the cowherd boys. And Krishna and Balaram and the cowherd boys would all sit together and they'd eat, taking the, the food. And the cows would come and the cows would also sit with them. 
ถึงเวลากินใช่ไหมคะพวกเพื่อนๆกิชนาทุกคนก็จะมานั่งแล้วก็จะมากินกันแล้วก็พวกวัวเนี่ยเขาก็จะมานั่งด้วยเหมือนกัน And Krishna was enjoying the beauty of the forest because the forest was very green due to the rain. Everything was growing nicely. It looked very beautiful, and Krishna was appreciating this. Actually, Krishna Himself is the cause of the beauty of the forest because material nature, material nature is under the control of Krishna. Well, the material nature is sometimes called Durga, and Durga moves like a shadow under the control of Krishna. Well, so whatever Krishna says, the material nature will follow. She always obeys. She is very obedient to Krishna's instruction. And so this rainy season was all Krishna's arrangement to increase the beauty of nature. And then, after the rainy season, then comes the autumn, and with the autumn, everything becomes very clean. Just like in the rainy season, the clouds are all dark color because they're carrying a lot of rain. But in the autumn season, the clouds all become white. Right, the, the clouds are white and the sky is blue, natural blue. So just like lotus flowers in the clear water, they're like persons who have fallen from yoga practice. But then again, they be, take up, they come back. Sometimes people, their devotees, they go away, and then after some, they come back. So when they come back to Krishna consciousness, then they look very nice. They look beautiful again. <laughs> So with the autumn season, everything becomes beautiful. Like we say, sarat. Sarat is the autumn season. So that just like when a materialistic person comes to Krishna consciousness, he also becomes. He becomes. He gives up all his bad habits, and he becomes clear like the sky, just like in autumn. <laughs> Uh, 
ขามาเขามาเป็นสาวกเนี่ยเขาก็จะยกเลิกนิสัยไม่ดีของเขาทั้งหลาย so just like we said just like everything becomes purified with the presence of autumn the sky, the, the sky is clear and the ground also becomes nice and clean so just like a person when they become krishna conscious they give up their bad habits <laughs> One of Krishna, one of Krishna's names is Hari. Hari means one who takes away. So Krishna takes away all the bad habits from anybody who becomes a devotee. We see people before they're devotees, they're smoking, they're drinking, they use bad language, so many bad habits. But after they become devotees, they stop all these things. So we said the clouds in the autumn they're white because they're not carrying any water. So they're compared to the man who retires from family life and he gives up all his responsi material responsibilities. In ordinary life, man in family life has many anxieties. He has to worry about all the economic problems and maintaining the home. And so many issues, always anxiety. But when he retires, then he becomes freed of all these responsibilities. So when he's retired, then he's like the white cloud, no more, nothing there, no anxiety anymore. So another example is given, it says that sometimes in autumn, the water coming down the mountains, sometimes it comes to, sometimes it's flowing in nice clear water and other times there's no water, sometimes it will just stop. So they're compared to the saintly person that sometimes he will speak and sometimes he's silent. Sometimes he doesn't say anything, he will just be quiet. Mm. 
Another, he's, he's, he's not obliged. Sometimes he will speak, sometimes he doesn't speak. You cannot force him. So in the autumn season, there are many small ponds with little bits of water there. And some creatures, some different creatures are living there in the water. And they cannot understand that this, these ponds are very temporary, that they're gradually drying up. Right, because these are just some temporary ponds. It's not, they're not, they're just made by the heavy rain. So you get some pond, pool of water there, and some creature comes and lives there. But that pond is drying up every day. The same way materialistic people, they cannot understand how their life is being reduced every day. They're coming closer and closer to death. They spend all their time engaging in family life and maintaining their family, but they cannot see how that life is going to come to an end. So materialistic people, they're always unhappy, they're not able to maintain their family. But when somebody takes to, when somebody becomes Krishna conscious, then they, 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 they lose their interest in family enjoyment. They, 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 they don't worry about that anymore. Just like in the autumn season, the water in the ocean becomes nice, calm and quiet. So in the same way, a person who is a little advanced in Krishna consciousness, he becomes free, he's not disturbed by any kind of problems. So we said, just like in, in the autumn, because there's no rain, they build a wall, they build a dike out of mud to keep all the water in the field. So that's like people, they should keep their energy. When they understand, they get to, when they get a bit older, they come to the age of about 50, and then they have to retire from family life, and they have to keep their energy 
for Krishna consciousness. Right. By the age of 50, we have to, they said we should go and live in the forest. <laughs> we have to prepare for the next life. And so we don't want to be working all of our life just to maintain the family. Then in the autumn season, in the daytime the sun is very hot, uh, but at night the, then the moon is very cool. So by taking shelter of Krishna, we can get relief from the, the heat of the material world. When, this, when there's no clouds in the sky, then this, you can see the stars shining very clearly. Just like when a person is in Krishna consciousness, then there's no dirty things there. And he's like the stars, he becomes nice, attractive, just like the stars in the sky. So the Vedas tell us about how we can do different yogas and different karma, yajnas, to get material benefit. But the real purpose of the Vedas is to get Krishna consciousness. And so the devotee's heart has to become clean, just like the sky in the autumn, it should become clean, no dirt, there should be no dirt. During the autumn, that's when the moon is the most beautiful. It's in the sky, in the clear sky, along with the stars. So that's like Lord Krishna who appears in the Yadu dynasty. Lord Krishna is like the moon and the Yadu dynasty are all the stars. So the heat of the summer and then the rainy season, it's a lot of suffering. These two seasons are very intense, but when it comes to autumn, then it's very pleasant. It brings great relief. So everybody feels relief, only the gopis, they don't feel any relief because they're feeling separation from Krishna. 
ทุกคนนะคะจะรู้สึกโลง่งรู้สึกสบายใจอะไรยกเว้นพวกกรูปีพวกกรูปีเนี่ยจะไม่สบายใจเพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยจะต้องห่างจากดุชนา And when it comes to the autumn season, then at that time we see all the different animals, the cows and the birds and the deer. They all become pregnant. The females all become pregnant. So these pregnant females, they're just like the the great devotees who, by the grace of Krishna, and they're guaranteed to get good destination in the next life. If we want to get good results in our devotional service, we have to follow the teachings of Rupa Goswami. Right, we have to have enthusiasm, patience, determination. Um, we have to we have to follow the rules and regulations. And we have to stay in the association of devotees. Right? If we follow these principles, then we can be sure we will advance. Just like these different females become pregnant, so the devotees will also become full of Krishna consciousness. So in the rainy season, there will be lotuses. And there will be also lilies, but in the summer season, in the autumn season, because the autumn season there's a very hot sunshine, so only the lotus grows in this autumn season. The lily, they all wilt; they cannot survive in the in the summer, autumn. <laughs> So this is compared to a government, who, which is strong, and the thieves and robbers cannot have any effect. They cannot harm the people. So the strong government is compared to the 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 heat, the sunshine of the autumn, very hot. And the lo the lotuses are compared to the the good people, the the nice citizens. And the and the robbers and thieves, they're like these lilies which cannot survive in the autumn. So autumn time, then the fields become full with many grains. That time, a lot of rice and wheat, everything grown. 
ช่วงนั้นแหละก็จะมีพวกธัญญาหานะคะพวกข้าวอะไรมันก็จะขึ้นมาดี So all the farmers are happy and they they have do they do different religious ceremonies and they will offer the the new grains offer the new grains to Krishna. They will make some sweet rice with this new rice. They will make a nice sweet rice and offer it to the deities, and then distribute to all the people. Okay, so we will stop here. We didn't finish the chapter. We're still going through it. Nearly finished. Okay. Okay, we'll finish it next time and go on in the next class. Are there any questions? I think I had a question. Yes. Guruji, I'm not very clear on this part where you explain that um, the soul is uh, covered by false ego. The soul on its own is pure, right? Yes. So how does the uh, how does it cover get? I mean, how is it directly in contact with false ego? That means the soul is so pure. That means it has no touch of false ego, right? Or I mean, that's what I'm not really clear on, Guruji. Well, what I was explaining is the consciousness. Our consciousness becomes affected by the false ego, right? It's the consciousness which comes from the soul. So that consciousness in con is affected by the false ego. Okay. Just like you pass a light, you know the light may be white, but you pass the light through red red cloth, it becomes red. The the light appears red. So the same way, our consciousness is pure, but because it's in contact with the false ego, it becomes affected. We have false ego, it can be false ego in goodness or in passion or in ignorance. ดวงวิญญาณเนี่ยถึงโดนปกคลุมโดยอหังการค่ะจิตสำนึกเนี่ยโดนปกคลุมโดยอหังการความจริงจิตสำนึกของเราเนี่ยจะต้องบริสุท
ยึดอยู่กับร่างกายนะคะคิดว่าเราเป็นร่างกายเ yeah, it's it's an interesting and and it's an instructive example given by Sukadeva Goswami. g u r u d e v does uh, uh, the consciousness ever become uh, turns back towards you know or even though we are aspiring devotees yet. I mean, we're devotees uh, on that path, but does it ever turn to that original state, even for a second in the day, or is it always going to be covered by false ego? Because there must be some time in the day that, due to which, I don't know how to explain. Sorry, I'm I'm a bit lost on how to explain. Well. That consciousness is not going to be eternal. No, it it will depend on how we associate with the material, with the energy, with the Krishna's external energy, or his mm. internal energy. You know, mm. consciousness yes. will depend on our, how, how we are situated. Are we identifying ourselves as a body, or do you identify yourself as a soul? Mm. You got my question, k u r u d e v Thank you for the answer. Yes. ตะกี้นะคะมาจีก็ถามว่าแล้วไอ้ตัวอาหารการเนี่ยค่ะมันจะอยู่กับเราตลอดเลยไหมหรือว่ามันจะอยู่บ้างบางวันแล้วมันจะไม่อยู่บ้างบางวันนะคะคําตอบก็คือมันแล้วแต่จิตสํานึกของเรานะคะว่าเพราะว่าจิตสํานึกของเราเนี่ยมันถูกอาการมามันก็ขึ้นอยู่กับการคบหาสมาคมของเราด้วยใช่ไหมคะแล้วก็มันก็จะขึ้นอยู่กับจิตสำนึกของเรานะคะนั่นแหละ Srila Prabhupada wanted to go to Japan actually and Prabhupada was planning to attend an exhibition in Japan and he wrote this book about uh, what we call Light of the Bhagavat based on this chapter of the Krishna book. We have a ve- it's a very nice book, The Light of the Bhagavat, and there's beautiful pictures drawn by one Chinese artist lady, which is there in the book for each of the each of the examples. There's an illustration. It's a very nice, very instructive book. It's all based on this one chapter. Yes, g u r u d e v Thank you. Any other questions there? ใครมีคำถามถามนะคะทีาาีแตกต่างกันใช่ไหมคะอ uh, question is consciousness and soul are different right yes consciousness is the symptom of the soul Sorry, Guru, I didn't hear. I said, co- consciousness is the symptom of the soul. Just like the sunlight is the symptom of the sun. Or, you, or somebody may have a fever, so the high temperature is a symptom of the disease. Or 
So consciousness is spread throughout the body. If someone stamps on our foot, if someone stamps on our foot, we feel the pain. Somebody pulls your finger, you feel the pain because consciousness is there spread throughout every tip of the body. But the soul is situated in the heart. The soul is like, just like the sunlight is situated in one place in the sky and the sun, the sun planet is there one place and from the sun planet the sunlight is all pervading throughout the universe. So the same way we have one soul in, situated in the heart and from that one soul consciousness is spread throughout the body. So what is the difference between the living body and the dead body? There's no consciousness, there's no soul in the dead body. Sometimes we, we see the consciousness may be suppressed, it may be covered, somebody may become unconscious, but they still have conscious, it's still there, the soul is still in the body even though they may be unconscious. So the consciousness will come back. It's, it's just been put into some covered, so some suppressed condition for some time. So our consciousness can be material and it can also be spiritual. And when it's material, material consciousness, then it's influenced by the modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. But spiritual consciousness means to understand we are servant of Krishna. The spirit soul is by nature full of bliss and knowledge eternally. But the body is not. Body is ignorant. Body is miserable and temporary. So by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, we can purify our consciousness. By taking prasadam, we purify our consciousness. All of our activities of bhakti yoga are meant to purify the consciousness. Krishna, 
เปิดซาดัมนะคะแล้วก็ทํากิจกรรมในกิจนาทิสำนึกทุกประการเนี่ยสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยจะทําให้จิตสํานึกของเราเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นค่ะ so by by nature we're all originally Krishna conscious but we've forgotten Krishna Does Chaya Madhaji have a question? Yes, Guru Maharaj. อาจารย์นาแปลให้หน่อยนะคะคือพี่ถ่ายว่าอย่างเนี้ยมหาลักกำลังจะพูดพอดีเลยพี่ทรงว่าอย่างถ้าเกิดว่าอย่างเราอะค่ะเรามาจากบักวานอย่างเงี้ยค่ะเราย่อมมีความรักคริชนาอยู่ในใจลึกๆแต่ว่าพอเรามาอยู่ในโลกเนี้ย consciousness อะเราก็จะแปลเปลี่ยนไปตามธรรมชาติวัตถุก่อนที่เราจะมาเจอสาวกแล้วก็มาคบหาสมาคมมาปฏิบัติปฏิโยค่ะอย่างเงี้ยค่ะถ้าเกิดว่าคนเราตายไปแล้วอะค่ะเอ่อคนคนบิสเนสเนี่ยมันจะไม่อยู่กับโซใช่ไหมคะมันจะเหมือนว่าเราจะมีมีกิจนาจิตสำนึกเนี่ยติดตามเราไปหรือเปล่าในเมื่อเวลาเราตายแล้วอะไรเงี้ยค่ะค่ะเข้าใจค่ะเอ่อค่ะเอ่อใช่มาจากยีเซ็ตเอ่อ So the when we die, the consciousness will also follow with us, or we will have uh, the pure consciousness, the consciousness that you just mentioned now that we we have the we have Krishna consciousness. That that consciousness will come, or this material consciousness will go with us after we die. Yeah, at the time of death, we will take our conscious whatever is the condition of our consciousness. We will take that consciousness to the next life. It will determine our next life. If we die in the mode of ignorance, then we will take a birth in the mode of ignorance in the next life. If you die in the mode of passion, then we take birth in the mode of passion in the next life. So devotee has to prepare for leaving the body. We want to purify our consciousness so that at the time of death we can have thought of Krishna. It, we, we, in Krishna consciousness, we have to learn how to live, and we, and when we join the Krishna consciousness movement, we get some good in, in teaching education about how we should live, what how we should live properly. But then we also get teaching about how we have to die. It's more difficult to die than to live. <laughs> ใช้ชีวิตเราจะสอนหลักการใช้ชีวิตที่ที่ดีใช่ไหมที่จะพัฒนาจิตสำนึกของตนเราก็จะสอนให้ตายด้วยนะคะซึ่งความจริงเนี่ยการเรียนรู้ในการตายเนี่ยมันยากเสียกว่าการที่เราจะเรียนรู้ในการใช้ชีวิตอยู่เสียอีก We may be a nice devotee when we're living but we may have a lot of attachment and that will come out more at the time of death So we have to prepare 
we have to gradually detach ourselves from the material world and prepare ourselves to go from this world to go back to Krishna. When it comes time to leave the body, we should just be able to think of Krishna and concentrate on the holy name of Krishna. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, we read about Bhishma Dev, how Bhishma Dev gave up his body. He had been fighting in the battle of Kurukshetra and his body had become filled with arrows. So he was laying on the bed of arrows, waiting to leave the body. So he was in a very uncomfortable, painful condition, but he passed many days to give instruction to other devotees. And then finally it came time, the auspicious time came for him to leave the body and Lord Krishna came in front of him and he fixed his mind on Lord Krishna. He stopped talking about everything else and he just focused on Krishna. So Krishna says, one who, what is it? Krishna says, whatever is our state of consciousness at the time of death, that will determine our next birth. But if we can think of him at the end of life, then we will go to him. So do you want to go to Krishna next life, Chaya? Where do you want to go next life? She wants to go all the time. Huh? She wants to go back to Krishna all the time. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, okay, any other question? Uh, Guru Maharaj. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah. uh, I have two questions. Yes. Uh, uh, now, Sukadeva Goswami is explaining about the past times of Krishna, and this is a very different topic, right, Guru Maharaj? Compa very beautiful comparison of the nature and different concepts. So, is there any significant special reason for this? This is my first question. And the second question is Did we forget, forget Krishna because we didn't develop enough love for him? Is it like that? Because uh, we didn't have. Uh, much uh, we didn't develop, uh, we didn't have a lot of love for him, so we became envious and we forgot Krishna. Is it something like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we forgot Krishna because Icha and Dvesha said out of desire and envy. Right? One thing is we're envious of Krishna because Krishna has everything. You know, he's Bhagavan and he has everything more than us. So we'll, we have some envy to him. And another thing is desire. 
that uh, we have the desire ourselves to, you know, to want to be Krishna or to be on that level of, as Krishna. So that's why we forget Krishna, that's why we come in the material world. And we come in the material, we've been here a long time. It says, uh, Krishna Bhulya Jiva Nadir Bahir Mukha Itaiva Maya Tara Deya Samsara Dukha That we have forgotten Krishna since time immemorial. Anadi Bahir Mukha Krishna Bhulya Jiva Anadi Bahir Mukha and we've been looking at the external energy. We've, we've become attracted to the material world. We've forgotten Krishna. We find we found so many things to attract us here in this material world. And uh, the, the first question was, what, what's the significance of all of this description of autumn? Well, you'll see in the next chapter, Krishna is going to speak about how the gopis become attracted to Krishna and the beauty of the Vrindavan forest and everything, uh, how, how the whole scene is being created, the beauty of the autumn season, you know, after the rainy season comes the autumn season and it's very beautiful and we heard how people become very lusty at that time, all the birds and the animals and the deer and everything, they're all mating at that time and people also become affected, they also become agitated, overwhelmed by lust. And so this is the situation in Vrindavan in the autumn season and we're going to hear about how Krishna uh, comes to dance Rasalila invites all the gopis to come in the forest. And so coming up to all that, so this description of autumn is preparing us for the beauty of the Vrindavan forest and to understand the pastimes which take place there. Mm -hmm. ทำไมสุขมีสองคําถามนะคะถามว่าทําไมสุขเดวกุสามีเนี่ยถึงอธิบายถึงเอ่อบรรยากาศที่บรินดาบ้านในซึ่งต่างจากบทที่ผ่าน
people trying to stop us is difficult to look at as mercy or I, I can't connect the both versions together. You can't connect Krishna's mercy to people stopping. No, no, no. In other parts, yes, I can. But I'm saying I can't, I can't see how to look at this act when someone is trying to stop me from serving the Lord, how to look at that as a positive act. I mean, something that I might have done to them. How does that relate to it? Well, it's going to depend on the individual situation and who is the person trying to stop you and the circumstances involved. It's not going to be the same for everyone. Well, some people, of course, they, they will be envious and they think, why are you serving Krishna? You should be serving me. We often find like that, you know, the husband doesn't like his wife serving Krishna and then the husband saying to the wife, you serve me, I'm your husband, you know, don't go and don't, you forget this guy Krishna. And so that problem is there, you know. And, uh, and, but on the other hand, it may also be a test from Krishna, that Krishna wants to see how determined you are. Just like the gopis, they were tested. You know, Krishna would disappear from them, Krishna would call them to come, and then they, when they came, he'd say, why are you coming, what are you doing here? So Krishna would test their determination. Because Gurudev, then this brings into mind that, you know, when um, it comes to, like you were saying earlier, uh, wife should always be the hus with the husband, but then under such circumstances, there comes a point in time where the husband wants to leave the wife. The wife doesn't want to leave, but the husband wants to leave the wife. Then either way, the wife will be left alone. You know what I mean? Mm. So there's nothing much that the wife can do about it, except for not become Krishna conscious. But then that is impossible. Right? So, I mean, it, it's... That's where it becomes... Okay, so the husband leaves the wife, then the wife's free, she can be, just become, surrender to Krishna, take shelter of Krishna. Mm, okay. Means under such situations, if that happens, so then it's okay. But otherwise, of course, the wife should not leave the husband. Yes. Okay, that, that, that is digestible, okay. All right, Gurudev. Got it. Okay, so we'll f stop here. Thank you very much, Archana. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna.